With me, he is the director of economic research, the chief economist for the International Monetary Fund, uh, following on from, say, Kenneth Rogoff and Simon Johnson and others from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Olivier Blanchard. Professor, wonderful to be here. Hi, Tom. Your blue book, I just put it up here as we were going out. What is your single message as you look at the world's economic outlook? Big risks, but solutions. Uh, there are enormous risks at this point, but it's, I think there's a set of policies which would uh, decrease them substantially, make things better, not, fi not make things great, but make things better. Is it a time to be bold in action? Mohamed Alarian and the FT talking of the French banks, rumors swirling today of a, a tarp for this country or for that country. Is it a time to be bold or do you want to be patient as conservative economists would want to be in the United States? No, I think you have to be, you have to do things now. But I think what needs to be done is not particularly surprising or different from things which have been done in the past. They have to be done now. Uh, I can develop that a bit, but Please. you know, I think the first thing, I mean, clearly the, the danger is in Europe. There's no question. So on Europe, what you want to do is Greece is not going to be solved overnight. And that's an issue on its own. It's a small country. What you want to make sure is that the rest of Europe is this okay, right? So what do you need to do? Well, first, you have to make clear that the other countries are not like Greece. So you need to show that they are fiscally adjusting. And I, on this, the news is actually quite good. I mean, if you look at you know, most European countries, they are taking very strong fiscal why measures. Why are the markets so turbulent? Well, wait, right. So I think step one is this. So I think that's not in the bag, but it's happening, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then the second is you have to convince the markets. And if the markets are not convinced, you get into trouble. Because take the case of Italy, right? Italy has taken very strong fiscal measures. So you look at the fiscal situation of Italy. To me, if Italy can borrow at 3%, should be okay. Mm -hmm. The problem is if investors decide that Italy is just like Greece, right. right, and they ask for 10%, then Italy is dead. So the second set of measures, and these are the ones which are not in place yet, right, is to make sure that Italy can borrow at 3%. Right. Now, who can do that? The right. ECB? It has to be the ECB right. for the moment. And the ECB has a program in place, right, which is called the SMP. Yeah. But it's not big enough, it's not ambitious enough, it's not clear enough. And so the investors are saying, well, is the ECB right. going to be in, is it going to be out? I think if they knew the ECB was in, right, mm -hmm. they would basically say, okay, it's fine. So I think that's, you know, the important aspect. second component, right? That's not bold, that's just reacting to, right. you know, run the same way for a in, bank or for the government. In the time that we have with you today, and your very busy day here at the IMF, I have to go back to February of 2010, right. and your essay in Vox, which, from where I sit, created a firestorm yeah. of opinion. Do you reaffirm that we need, or that you suggest we need some inflation? Here's a note, folks. You can see it, rethinking macro policy, low inflation limits, the scope of monetary policy in deflationary recession. Do we still need the greater scope of a bit more inflation? So I'm, I'm happy that you asked the question because I think my message has been misunderstood. What I was talking about was a very different animal, which is that in normal times, you basically want to have more inflation than we've had. So in normal times, maybe you want to have, I said 4% there, but say, let's say 4%. Yes. Because then the interest rate will be higher, say 6, right? Which means that when you have when you have to decrease the interest rate, you have 600 basis points you just can use. Mm -hmm. And I was worried that if you start with very low inflation and a low interest rate, you have much less margin, which is what happened. So the argument was about that. Now, today, do I want more inflation? No, I don't want more inflation. That's a very different thing, right? Today, I surely don't want deflation. And Ben Bernanke has been very explicit about it. Deflation is dangerous, so you want right. to avoid it. Uh, but I don't want to get out of the debt problem through inflation because you'd need a whole lot of inflation to make a dent on the debt. And a whole lot of inflation is a catastrophe in itself. So I'm not at all advocating uh, higher inflation at this point. I think we have to avoid deflation. I think we have to try to maintain kind of two, 3% inflation now. Uh, but the idea of using inflation to get out of a hole 
I'm against it. I want to rip up the script here in the minutes that we have left with you. We have dissent, real dissent at the Federal Reserve now, somewhat right. like Bank of England, but our own character to it in the United States. How far apart are the hawks and the doves at our Federal Reserve? I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not on the board from a distance. I'm speaking to you at MIT. That's my yes. fault. I, I no, no, understand as a public official. Even from here, you know, the Fed right. is only a block away, but it's, <laughs> it's far away now. Uh, my sense is from a distance, the disagreements are about things which in the end are not going to make an enormous difference to the outcome, which is, I think quantitative easing is useful, but it, it's not the thing which is going to get us out of a recession or not. So I think they are discussing these things and right. my sense is, in fact, it doesn't make much difference. Do you agree that we get out with manipulation such as Operation Twist? How, how do we get that animal spirit back? Is it yeah. nominal GDP? I think, I think you're right. I mean, Operation Twist is not animal spirits. It's something. It will help a bit, I think. The problem is how to get the confidence of people up and you know, nobody knows how to do it. I think you have to explain, you have to show that there is a way. Uh, if you look at expectations of income growth, they have fallen, they have fallen through the floor, they are dramatically low. If you could convince people that there is a future, there is a way out, mm -hmm. then confidence will come back and with this demand and growth. Not easy to do, but essential. One final question, if I may. Madame Lagarde says this is 187 nations looking for a right. solution. How should the IMF project itself to Europe in the coming days and weeks to assist the politicians there to some form of solution? I think first we have to design a plan, show, show what a plan could be. And, you know, I gave you the sketch of what a plan could be, but we can clearly do this in a more, much more detailed way. We have to communicate this uh, to the policymakers. We have to insist as much as we can by persuasion, largely. Uh, we have other things we can do for Europe. We have standby programs with countries. We could offer the FCL, you know, the liquidity window to the countries which need it. But I think at this stage what's important for us is to say there is a problem, there is danger, there are solutions. Please, 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 please go at it. And I think your, if we do this... French accent, the word persuasion sounds so much more gentle well, and elegant as it would. Then I should uh, probably say it in German. Uh, oh, oh, and very good. Help We're going to have more. to leave it there.